bans the Hunter of Tice. No big surprise there. And then the Warlock uh, of Nymph is going to be banned by Tice. And, I mean, I figured that those are going to be the two classes we see banned every single time, right? Yeah, but then Savit's also banned Mage. Oh, yeah, which is a, yeah, a he did. If, especially if people don't practice much against yeah. Mage now. It's pretty hard to, to deal with. That is true. Well, uh, looking at these deck lineups, who do you think has the edge here, e -Cup? Um At the deck lineups? Yeah. Yeah, um, hard to say, actually. Uh, I think this is anyone's game. Mm. Any deck can counter, uh, like, just counters for every deck here, as yeah. far as I can tell. I think uh, the rogue is the X factor. Um, if Nimsh can just go off with Miracle Rogue, it's strong against three of those decks, or three of those classes, rather. Now, I, I mean, I just got in. I didn't get to see uh, any of the games right. until that last Specific series. I, the Miracle decks, did they, a lot of them have Malagos or no? One of them did. Yeah, I saw it. Right. I did so see the one Malagos, so uh, I wasn't sure if that's something that's been popping up a lot. That's the only one we saw so far. Yeah. Okay. RDU also ran Malagos in a different tournament, so people are yeah, trying yeah. to incorporate more, which is cool. Uh, just kind of wondering about that, yeah. see how that, that deck might fare up. But anyways, it's going to go ahead and be uh, some, some Pe warrior oh. against Druid action. There's Wild Growth. You know Druids play that, Artosis? Wild Growth? What does that do? <laughs> it wins I've never seen that card two. before. That's what it does. Oh, sick. <laughs> so, you, so you mean it's it's uh, Undertaker? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's no, no, two, Wild Growth. Two. So it's the Druid form of Undertaker. Yeah, yeah exactly. There, yeah. Oh, okay. But see, Undertaker's <laughs> turn one win, so... I like that card better. Oh, well, imagine a deck with turn one Undertaker and a turn to Wild Growth. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> wow! And turn four, you can play something with Death Rattle that costs four mana. I don't even know anything. Gosh. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. That's a sick play right there. Well, I mean, seriously, though, the Wild Growth is a really big deal considering Tice. I mean, before that, his hand wasn't looking too stellar, and getting close to the Spectre Knight early on is really powerful. Mm. Is there even anything with Death Rattle on this cost for mana? I or? can't think of anything, actually. I, I don't but here, here, I can fix your play uh, for you, right? Coin Wild Growth, turn two, you go Undertaker, Undertaker, Leopard Elm. Wow. You are the dirtiest kind of player. Oh, I'm seriously thinking, And though. now I have no cards in my hand. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't matter. You just top the double seven draw or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Oh, man. Well, uh, uh, you know, this game uh, definitely has the potential to go on pretty long here. That wild uh, growth. I mean, it's going to get him to some stuff earlier, but he doesn't it, have it any great plays here. It keeps you relevant because Druid's Curve before that looked pretty poor, but now... I feel like Tice has a pretty reasonable an uh, set of hands because uh, yeah. he has Ancient of Lore to add to whatever the board is, plus draw some cards and really keep up with the pressure. Yeah. Um, the thing is, like, yeah, I guess he has to hero power into this so that he can set up kill with his spider eventually. But right. Eh, don't really care for. The good thing about the up. spider hitting the board after the ghoul is if they die at the same time, mm. then the spiderlings will survive the death rattle from the ghoul. Which is a good thing. Yeah, definitely. All right, well, some pretty good answers in disposal of Nymph here. Uh, you know, overall, your game plan is just to make sure that you don't take as much damage early on from the Druid. Especially if you see Haunted Creeper, I think you can assume it's the fast double combo Druid, right? There's no ramp Druid that plays. Yeah. So Creeper this Druid is pretty much what you can always expect whenever you are facing a Druid. I, don't, I haven't seen any other Druid built in a long time. Really? You haven't seen ramp Druids? No, not really. I mean, this is what pretty much anyone, everyone yeah, plays It's definitely nowadays. the most popular one, I would agree yeah, with. Sure. Uh, what do you guys think, by the way, of him going for this, uh, the Armor Smith as opposed to something like, like the Acolyte? Armor Smith, especially. Yeah. yeah. Because I was kind of feeling like Acolyte could be pretty cool coming up here, especially when he hero-powered into this, this uh Unstable Ghoul, I felt like, uh, you know, no matter what the Acolyte's going to get, you at least two cards. I guess you draw... I guess you get, gain the armor here, yeah, which he is just wanted to maximize priority. his armor and also get rid of the Spiderlings at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's a trade-off. Both are important to the warrior, gaining life against Druid, but also mm. drawing cards. Yeah, it, it just felt like kind of a slow start here for Tice, so maybe that was a point where he could have done that. But uh, he set himself up. He's pretty good with his armor, but... You know, as we all know, these spectral lights right. can be pretty annoying to get rid of, no matter what you're playing. I I do generally like using Death Spite. I'm mean, assuming you don't have the opportunity to, but using Death Spite as soon as possible to get the threatening of the five damage on whatever Druid has, because mm. Druid has so many cards. If he's running Yetis on the off chance, or if he, you know, Lotheb, Ancient of Lore, all of them, the second charge of Death Spite can threaten whoever comes down the following turn. So I generally like developing it earlier. So. 
it is an interesting trade off that Nims has chosen here. Yeah, with the uh, the accolade of paint here, I'm not sure what. Uh, I feel like he's just cycling that card basically for three mana because his hand doesn't really have anything good for turn four other than right. possibly using that death spite. It's a three mana loot hoarder. That's yeah, something like that. That does only one damage, not two. Yeah, uh, three three mana loot hoarder that got Elder Peacekeeper. <laughs> Okay, yeah. yeah, that's exactly what that I was. I like that analogy. Yes, because Spot on. that's a play that happens a lot as well, so we can use that analogy. Uh, <laughs> plenty of decent options here for Gnemish. Hmm. He has like, the choice between Lothap, which is probably the most likely. Just counter the Lothap with hmm. another Lothap. And uh, yeah, you could also go for Sludge Badger or even a Despite. But Despite, more, um, uh, I guess Despite is not really likely. Right, the Sludge Belcher does help him get more mileage out of this Armor Smith, though. And then, if you drop Lothab, he can easily ignore and just push. But uh, Yeah, do you think he... he yeah, I, I would imagine he would push there, right? Right. Like, I you mean, kill Armor Smith and just push if he just drops Lothab. Yeah, yeah. And, I, mean, and that, I think that would put him in a great spot, because, I mean, look at his hand anyways. He's got Ancient Lore. If right. you drop a Lothab here, and he just kind of pushes in for some damage, leaves Draw your Lothab and plays Ancient Lore, you're facing down, like, a couple 5-5s. Five you know, he's going to have a great hand set up. His hand is really solid anyways. Right. I mean, I, I don't think this is the wrong play by Nimsh. It's just I feel like he's falling behind right here. Savage Roar, very important to, to get already. You know, that, this game is not supposed to drag on for the Druid whatsoever. Mm. So picking up a, a combo piece is really nice. Yeah, and I'd imagine he's going to be able to pick up plenty of those moving forward. Oh, Ragnaros. She has a rag and Okay. Yeah. Ragnaros, interesting. Tice likes that card a lot. Yeah, he puts it in Handlock. Yeah. Apparently puts it in Combo Druid. Huh. I really wasn't actually expecting to see that in the same deck as Haunted Creeper, but yeah. Um, okay, we'll see. <laughs> I mean, Tice knows what he's doing, so. I, I mean, it's specific tech against something. Is he afraid of fr Freeze Mage? No. <gasps> I am very surprised Whoa. about this. Huh. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, yeah, I am too. I don't think I would have done that. I mean, you get to erase his armor for one. You make uh, The warrior needs to attack into your minions, not exactly. you attacking into his minions. Exactly. So. There's, in my opinion, no reason. I guess he just wanted to prevent the Lothap trading the Spectral Knight. Oh, uh, yeah. But he has the that swipe, so I don't understand. Yeah, yeah. The swipe would have been just a salt play against basically anything there. But, well, at least this, this uh, Sylvanas is pretty... Well, I guess it's not that nice, is it? Yeah, Ty's finally finding a decent silent target. But uh, if he trades the Sylvanas, not, I don't know. Like, I disagree completely. Yeah, I don't like him playing control against. here. It's just I, this is this is not the first time I've seen huh. this this tournament. I've cast it uh, on the secondary stream uh, yeah. Twitch TV slash Tech TV. Um, I cast what was it? Pini Awesome versus uh, Icarus. Mm -hmm. Pini Awesome was playing the Druid as well, and he was also trading minions twenty four seven yeah. against Priest. Like I oh, against Priest. Yeah, like, I, that, that's a class you have a lot of abilities to pressure with as a Druid because the four attack is so strong. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. He wow. chose to trade. Yeah. It, it, you know, a lot of times we see players' play styles come out. I've seen this over the over. A, I guess Hearthstone's been out over a year now, but I've seen this a lot. <laughs> You're about to pull the grandpa card over the years. In my times, like back well, in the day. That's right. Uh, Savits would play board control with Murlocs. If, oh, if we could recall that. In fact, that. at Sea Story Cup number one, <laughs> yes, that's indeed. what you guys did. But uh, anyways, I mean, we'll see if it works out for him. He's still got a really solid hand. That's true. I don't know. Is this not the deck that like I didn't get to see Tice play earlier? Is this a double combo deck or is this, this is the a first single time we've combo seen deck? Tice do this too. Okay. Yeah. Because maybe it's a single combo deck and that's why he's not pushing for damage so much. Nah, I think it has to be double combo when you're running. You would think so. Right. When you're running things like Shade of Next Ramus and yeah. you're running like Haunted Creeper. They but he's also got Rag and he's also trading minions. So I'm like, huh. That's true. If I was playing like a slow Druid, I might consider that. But I could foresee maybe removing one of the pieces, like maybe one force of nature, but I feel like th you benefit so much off double combo with yeah. smaller sticky minions because the first one's flexible. Of course, Not yeah. to mention that it's another way to win. Two Savage Roars sometimes just as good as co the one combo. Hmm. It's kind of interesting uh, the way he's played this so far, but anyways, building a really strong board right now. Yeah. But also a board that is uh, vulnerable to brawl. Hmm. But then if he brawls, he spends his rest of his turn and then... He uses a lot of his removal. Ragnaros? I don't know. 
now. No oh, brawl there yet. Nimsha's hand's pretty poor. Yeah, it, everything for him right now looks a little bit messy. There's no, like, really fantastic stuff going on here. At this point, Nimsha's probably really worried about the combo, but there's no way for him to clear this board effectively, so he might as well just play it like uh, his opponent does not have the combo. Yeah. So maybe just drop the rack. Would not necessarily be the worst play. There's plenty of good targets for it. Yeah. Do you do you take out uh, the Yeti with your weapon if you do that? You can do that, or you could also attack the the, um, the keeper, yeah. so you don't take too much damage. Yeah, I wouldn't mind that play. I think that that's pretty solid. Like other than that, he could shield block to try to maybe dig. Like if he yeah. picks up a brawl, that's pretty awesome. Shield block into to sludge belcher, but that's just so. Weak compared yeah, to I, what Ragnaros can do. Yeah, she'll block in a sludge belcher doesn't feel quite right. Oh, uh, that's a little unfortunate. Mm. The fact that he drew um, Acolyte right after he uses Death Spite Charge. Because he wanted to preserve his uh, armor count so that way he yeah. doesn't shred it before he attacks in, but a little unfortunate. Oh, well. Um, well, I mean, there's just so many options here for Tice. His hand is just so superior. His board position is so superior as well. He doesn't even need the force of nature. Uh, Actually, right. he will just... <laughs> just Savage Roar itself. Savage Roar with the minions he has on the board. Yep. Do you like this matchup normally uh, in, in the current metagame, playing uh, Druid against Warrior like this? Because I, I, I like the Druid in this matchup, generally, anyways. I, I definitely would not have traded as much as Tyus did, but, um, yeah, overall, the way he played, uh, otherwise it was decent. And the matchup is good for Druid, usually. Mm. I, th I think you attack here. Yeah. There's no difference um, in how he spends removal here at his leisure. Like, either way, he's still under heavy pressure, and you threaten combo. Yeah. So, and I mean, if he plays a brawl or something, like, right. basically the only way he's going to crawl back in this game is via brawl. So right. you may as well just attack with everything, because who cares? What, is he going to execute that? Go ahead. <laughs> and you still have ways to follow up damage while being able to keep combo pieces in your hands. Mm. So. Well, Nymph just has to go to the drawing board and start figuring out a way to climb back in it. But I think Savage Roar just ends the game here. Let's see. Yeah, I think you're right. Right? Yeah, I believe yeah, so. Savage Roar by uh, itself is 8 damage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Savage Roar is a pretty good card. That's it. And he doesn't even have to show Ragnaros. So, if, for example, Nimsh has a BGH, he might feel like, oh, I don't have anything to use it yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, you could just use it early. Yeah. Definitely a possibility. There it is. Well, very fast game one, and Nimsh will have to turn to something else. Was losing his warrior a big deal though in the overall series? People have been telling me like warrior is just very specifically good against like the hunter, mm. uh, the aggro portion. But if Nymph can deal with it in another way, is it does it even really matter? They lost his warrior here. I think it's kind of an expendable. Clip. I love paladin versus paladin. Give me that oh all day. <laughs> I love going <laughs> to fatigue, GTFO, man. <laughs> oh baby, fatigue is my playground, Frodan. Gosh, you just want to coin. Don't hero don't power. even mention fatigue <laughs> in my presence. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. He had an epic game against the Vites where it came down to oh, like yeah? one. That was a really insane game. Right? Yeah, you yeah, should, yeah, I was totally referring to that. You should commentate that. me tomorrow, Ecop. Okay. You'll really like some of my games. I promise. <laughs> that's right. I was saving you, bro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, wild growth again. So Tice is really good at this game. Yeah, he's and he has an innervate and a Showing coin as well. He's got, he's got all sorts of stuff the hype is there. The hype, hype is justified. He gets wild growth every game. You know, I've seen that work in other tournaments before right. for people. Although the the truth in the reality situation is sometimes, granted that you're playing against aggressive decks, wild growth might not ever be played. Th this is not the yeah. case here, but the the, the wild growth is like pretty weak. Like I think it's gonna wait until turn three. <laughs> right. This actually right here is a very strong opening against Hunter uh, because all the minions that uh, Hunter can play on turn two also die to the keeper right now. Right. Mm. I mean, well, this this is like the dream start against any aggressive deck as a druid, whether yeah. it's two or it's aggro paladin or anything. Pretty darn good. Um, but luckily for him, he does have that evil horn bow, so he can clean up that keeper pretty easily. But that's like I hate doing something like that on turn three, bow into killing off their their minion that's already killed two of mine. Yeah, I mean the, the fact that the hunter still though is not really pushing any damage or building his board. This is tough stuff. I wonder what traps 
uh, Nimsh is running. Did we see his hunter before? Mm, I, I want to say I yes. I don't know. You have been casting. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think Gara. Which is exactly why he can't remember it. Right. Yeah, that's right. Casters stick together for Odan. Yeah. <laughs> eat that, eat <laughs> uh, Yeah, I, I think he runs freezing traps. I don't, I'm just trying to. The big fact is whether or not he runs like snake traps or whatnot. Cause mm. So the most common traps you will see nowadays are like two freezing traps, one snake trap, or the other yeah. way around. Yeah. yeah, I really like those uh, forms of Hunter right now. All right. Nimsh playing more to the face. You know, in his earlier series. He was playing very control with his hunter, I believe, and mm. that was very surprising for us because, like Nipsch, he's like trading high main into fire elemental, and it just felt like. Uh, was this against Savitz? No, it was against Gara. Oh, okay. Oh no, huh. no, no, wait. Because yeah, if it was against Savitz, I get it because the guy is yeah. playing lava burst like a crazy man. But uh, yeah, that would be weird because Nipsch is like known for going to face. This guy loves to be aggressive. Right. Yeah. All right. Tyson's play is pretty clean this turn. Just drop load that. Pretty much the only play right there. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does draw into one of his freezing traps here. Doesn't allow Gnimsh to have any good play here, unfortunately. This load up so devastating. Yeah, it's a very expensive hand. So, how does how does he? He probably plays a this? leper gnome this turn, guys. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> Do you think he? Not not completely sure, but maybe. <laughs> I was wondering if he cashes in to see if he draws with the loot hoarder, or if he lets his opponent ca like sneak in the two damage here. But uh, I think you cash uh, in. I think Druid at twenty five health going into six man in the next turn, you're gonna have to like play a little bit of a longer game. I mean, he does pick up a better card to play that's, than Lepernum. That's definitely better. Yeah. I think I would play that and actually remove this little one one token. To be honest, right. like just make sure your one of your taunts will live through the next turn pretty easily. Well, I mean, I guess there's a Black Knight in hand. He's going for six mana, so that won't be the case, but... <laughs> Lepernum actually scales decently in the mid-game if you didn't start off with Undertaker as a hunter, because then you have this scenario where if your opponent clears your board and for some reason you lose, you have the ability to refill it immediately, mm. then you can just drop Undertaker, like the web spinner you just drew, and yeah, then Lepernum yeah. you've been saving, and then you have like a 3-4 on board with some decent power. Interesting to note here, Grimsh could have actually killed the Lothab off with the bow, uh, but he values the charges, the potential charges that he can get out of it with yes. the Mad Scientist and the Freezing Trap in his hand more. Right. Yeah. Do you think that's a greedy play, or you think it was right? I think I, it's actually pretty greedy, because the Lothab is generating so much value now. Mm. It certainly but, is. The, the only thing... I, I think that uh, the the way that he did it, like he drew into that and then made his plan. And if he didn't have Black Knight, Lotheb hits that, and then he can trade his two one into it, maybe, right? Because he'd still have the the slime, so Hero Power couldn't have killed his two one that way. Yeah. So I think that, like, I actually personally like the play just because I think he had to play a little bit more greedy because of the high life total of of Tice. But yeah, now if we look at the board, like that Lotheb, right. the fact that he didn't deal with that, he's in trouble. I'm not sure how relevant this extra damage on the charges of the bow is too, but I it might be the only way he can win from this point on. We didn't see the trap, did we? Yeah, it could. it's probably snake trap. Uh, yeah, because the freezing trap's not highlighted yeah. right now, so it, high likelihood it's snake trap. Yeah, it should be. Could also be snipe. <laughs> be it could be. It could be misdirection and load that will kill Black Knight. Oh. Maybe it's, maybe it's just going to bruise him because it's an explosive trap. That's true, but then he plays Force of Nature right before, and oh, all the tree gets get cleared. Oh, that would be messed up. Well, uh, I think from Nimsh's point of view, you can just God. load up on charges. <laughs> oh, this. Uh, I mean, uh, I don't like any of these. Like, uh, the Sludge Belcher just does the same exact thing in the last turn, but even worse, because your opponent <laughs> can build up something on board and be more resistant yeah. to traps. Nimsh is in a terrible spot here. Yeah. Like, he knows one of those is freezing trap. There's two traps up around her. Okay, there's a freezing trap there. Right. So, does he want to loathe up the board again? I don't know about that, but. Wait, hold on. Hmm. Oh, just kidding. I was like, he had, if it's snake trap, you know, like, well, nothing popped when he attacked the mad scientist, but that was before. So. I was wondering, like, if there was a read that it oh, was a snake trap, but. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, the, the that's trap, what got the it. The trap wasn't in play. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Mistake. <laughs> oh, he could set off the uh, the traps with the the uh, 
force of nature. Which one do you want? I mean, I guess, would you like to bounce Lothar back to your hand, by the way? Well, you know that everyone's playing like two Hound Masters and two, uh, you know, guy that everyone plays in every deck. Sludge, Sludge Belcher. My Sludge. brain is a little bit slow. I just, no just landed. But <laughs> uh, I could see bouncing that. Or this play, I think, is totally fine right. as well. Like, to <laughs> that was explosive trigger. trap, man. If it was explosive, <laughs> that would have been <laughs> so funny. We were totally joking in the previous turn, but that was a very. I've seen people play it though. I mean, it's definitely a possibility. Yeah, like you know, firebat. Well, oh, we're not talking about the ladder one. here, right? So. No, I mean, if you make a, a read that Zoo would be really strong in the format, then explosive like we saw that in the NA qualifiers just a week ago. So. I mean, you could have. Yeah, hmm. yeah, I guess you're right. A few hunters played explosive back then. Eh, all the traps are are good in some way or another, right? right. Like. Uh, Especially, like, if one is in the mega game, it's because it's doing well, and if one isn't, it's because, uh... Check this out. What is actually still in a yeah. good spot here. Double kill command allows him to stay oh, relevant. Oh, jeez. And there's not a lot of ways for him to... Well, okay. That helps. That does help. But he's gonna get snakes now. For sure. That's right. Oh, my God. And that, that those are beasts to activate and, with kill command. you know, even with the uh, taunt out, I mean, that's 12 to the face for next turn easily. And if he picks up... What, Hunter's Mark next and turn? And that's actually 14 because of Lepronome. No, if he picks up uh, Hunter's Mark next turn, does that mean it's game? Uh, no, no. I don't. Oh, yeah, it is. You're right. Yeah, because the Lepronome could clear it. Yeah. Oh, and God. Then, and, and then, then the you bow double kill hits. command the hero power. Yeah. Wow. I this heard that crazy. Hunter's this a good is, class. This, this is not over. And he also gets another charge from this nature. We forgot to mention that. So he still has more damage as soon as he pushes past this first taunter. God, wow. Hunter's still relevant despite having an awful start and Druid starting perfectly. It had, you know, the ability to accelerate mana and get uh, a Keeper of the Grove on turn one. Uh, Never underestimate, underestimate the power of uh, Pyroblast that costs six mana. Pyroblast. Double command. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, hun this, yeah, this Hunter's Pyroblast. I right? guess you could say three mana Fireballs, but that would have been... Uh, a more of a direct translation. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. That would have been too simple and <laughs> too easy to follow. Is this not the Jim and Faye? <laughs> All right, let's see. What does he draw? Hunter's Mark? Is it the Hunter's Mark? No. no. Uh, that's the best top deck right there. <laughs> that's a Hunter. Right. <laughs> the sheer drop in the, the okay, power level. Uh, uh, hold on. I mean, 12. Okay, so does he three, trade four, five, and kill off six. Lothab here? He can deal like 14 damage here. No, he can deal. S no, he is that lethal because he can use his bow plus the gnome plus a snake to kill the taunt. Attack with the other two. That's two hero power. Double kill command. Oh, you're right. The, the two damage from the, yeah. The leopard so that's actually lethal if oh, he sees it. Great call, dude. I uh, that's very very. I play a lot of hunter just like everyone. Yeah, else I was like, man, that's hard to spot. Does Nymph see it? Oh, I mean, I think he sees it. He's going kill. Well, I mean, to the I base. think he'd probably do this anyways. Yeah, there it is. And just like that, he sneaks a win against this Druid deck that started perfectly. Yeah, that that was like a really good start for Tice. Uh, oh man, Tice is not happy about that. And you know what? Nymph won with Lepernome. Lepernymph. Lepernymph. <laughs> yes. Yeah. In fact. Uh, he he did that wrong. He should have used Lepernome as the killing blow. Oh, we can take notes on this. Okay, so if it is, I mean, if it's Death Rattle Priest, I would use that one probably. But uh, if it, otherwise, I think Warrior is just well, straight Ga up good choice. Well, Gara is still not out of the group. I mean, he just lost to uh, Savis. Yeah. Right, he and waits he the will, winner. For this. He will face uh, the winner of this match, and they will battle it out for who advances mm. out All of right. the group A. Well, Tice. Opening hand looks pretty good once again. Yeah, more. yeah, that's a really good opening hand. I, I would really be happy with that. But oh god, is that an Undertaker? Oh my god. Oh, Tice's hand ain't okay. nothing, Frodan. Now, do you wait till turn three? No. Well, no, you, you play I mean, that, you're afraid you, of Fiery War Axe, so. Yeah, nah. I mean, I guess. But I think I would just do it. Because, like, if he doesn't answer it, you just win the next turn. Because <laughs> you played two more. Yeah. 
I mean, it's so silly. I've seen it happen before. Like some players wait. Yeah, just yeah. Go for I, it. I mean, that's actually kind of a clever play because when you're on the ladder, uh, part of playing warrior is you always have fiery war axe in your opening hand. Right. Uh, as I've experienced, so. <laughs> yeah. It always feels like the case. Yeah. So will we see Taskmaster here? Uh, yes. I no, no. I think he plays the unstable ghoul because you to actually. Like, you're not going to take any damage this turn, and you get your the Undertaker into range to kill him almost no matter what with either Taskmaster or Cleave. Because, yeah, yeah. I Actually, I would have preferred that. Okay. Because he would have had to attack him with both or play another minion with Death Rattle, which, unless his Mad Scientist, dies automatically. And even if it is, I guess you have, you know, the double Taskmaster. Haunted Creeper also doesn't die automatically. Oh, yeah, yeah, that one too. Well, the ones in his hand would have died, wouldn't they have? Yeah, they would have. All right. That's true. And then uh, the web spinners don't... Yeah, the web spinners wouldn't have been there, too, with Unstable Ghoul. But I guess you still can do the same thing here. Oh, that's going to be a very important card for yeah. Tice. The Brawl is what can get him back against a huge Undertaker. That's well, for sure. Hunter's also whiffing on turn three. If he could pick up, like, Animal Companion... That'd be pretty good. That'd be really nice. Yeah, All right. Flair. He uh, something to do. He could also get a decent beast with this. Yeah, that's spinner. true. I always, I that's like the one thing I always forget oh. is like, you can attack the web spinner right. and, and hope to not get hungry crab. Right. I mean, you could evaluate your turn after you attack instead of like just being happy with this flare. If he attacked into unstable ghoul and gets a, it's a three mana beast. So we're back patriarch. I guess iron for a grizzly. Yeah, iron, iron for, for a grizzly wouldn't be too bad. How about getting owl or dire wolf or something true. like this? That was pretty good in this situation. I don't yeah. think those two cards are available with uh, with it. Yeah, yeah, you are. You Any beast. Wink. Oh, kappa. <laughs> oh. oh, speaking. Wow. Of good prediction. Oh, I told this. yeah. See, well, wow. I know how this card actually works. It's hungry crab and captain's <laughs> parrot. And uh, oh, man. <laughs> I was just going to say, I swear to God, I was talking to Strife Crow about this in the taxi <laughs> ride over here, the, the car ride over here, that it's either those two or it's this Tyrannosaurus Rex right. dude, but then the game always ends on turn eight. Oh, my God, Hungry Crab. The value. Craziness. Will we see Hungry Crab played in every Seed Story Cup? I think so. Interesting that he chose to go I hope forward. Trump gets it and then loses because of it. Because he needed anything but it. Still salty. I find it interesting that he went for Hungry Crab instead of Hero Powering. I mean, what is Hungry Crab going to do? I guess he's maybe he's banking on the top deck um, Houndmaster. Houndmaster. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, it, I think so. You know what? By playing that instead of this, as Tice, I would look at this and be like, I should probably remove this this turn. You know, right. you never let a beast stay out on turn three. Exactly. This is probably why he's should Yeah, that's actually here. really smart. But he's huh. decides, he decides not to cleave. Wow. And just says... Yeah, bring on the Houndmaster, whatever. Well, if he gets a Houndmaster, it's going to be pretty sick. Double Brawl, by the way. Yeah. Interesting. We've been oh. seeing it more often. You know, Double we saw it in EU BlizzCon yep. with uh, Mr. Yep. Yagut. I, like I don't know if anyone brawl, else kinda. plays Double Brawl, though. I played Double Brawl in my game, House Cup. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, 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 early in the cast, I was like, I, I didn't know it. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get to catch that tournament, actually. It's yeah. There was also two streams, so it's hard to watch everything. Well, uh, I do like Double Brawl, though. I think it's kind of neat. It's, like, so tricky because, like, yeah. I always feel 100% safe after the first Brawl. I'm like, ha, I can do anything now. I wonder <laughs> if he's running really heavy legendaries in the deck, though, because the way Mr. Yagut, when I first heard him explain this, was that, that Double Brawl made up for how greedy his deck was. Mm. And, uh, you know, the fact that he doesn't have a lot of early game to shore up in the late game. So I don't think it's that brawls. greedy, to be honest. Like, so far what we've seen out of it, like, we see a cleave yeah, in its hand, opposite, right? So, I mean, sometimes you cut the cleave, and that right. would be one way to get greedy with a warrior I mean, deck very easily. He has cleave and unstable cleave. Yeah, Like, yeah. he's got a lot of early game responses to aggro. So yeah. I'm curious as to what's in his deck, actually. Yeah, I don't know. Hand with double sludge patcher is pretty resilient to brawl, though. That's for sure. And then, of course, he's got that amazing charge minion. King crush himself. Yeah, that fire works was also I mean, very he's helpful. Got anti, he's got anti Ragnaros tech right there. Mm. You slam Ragnaros on turn eight, turn nine, you king crush it. <laughs> <laughs> After it deals eight damage, you you trade a card and one more mana for you it. You gotta do what you gotta seems, do sometimes. Man. Seems good. He's got to hope it stays alive. <laughs> this so deck's prepared commands. for anything, man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a nine mana hunter's mark, basically. All right. Well, let's see what he draws. Hmm. 
Animal Companion could be pretty strong. Getting a Leoc, yeah. Yeah. Sure, why not? One time you're really hoping for Leoc here. There it wow. is. Wow. And so then he has the bow to fully remove. Mm -hmm. Wow, this hunter. Really, really nice. Very good start still. I mean, the warrior's been trading his life away too using the weapon, and that's a dangerous spot to be in as warrior if you don't have board control. Yeah. Uh, you know, he does have actually, like, his deck is set up to be able to kill that anyway, so especially with... It's so funny that we joke about this can crush, but that's something you do not expect. But, it, you know, Tice obviously being a very good player is keeping track that there's a card in that hand that hasn't been played. Right. Two web spinners, only one hungry crab. Something's not yeah. Right up here. Yeah, he's like, oh, is he holding the captain's parrot for late game, like, to right. use kill, kill commands? Command. Yeah. That's what I would be putting oh him on, goodness. probably. This is, this is interesting, actually, because Tice had the option of, uh, kill of attacking the Leoc so he can finish it off with Cleave next turn. I mean, he still oh, can yeah. this turn. Yeah, I guess he can. Uh... Well, uh, he still has he still has that opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Like you mentioned. I, I mean, obviously, because Grimsch now played uh, Hyman instead of Last Patch. If he played the Last Patch, it wouldn't have been possible. This is so much damage. Yeah, that's a lot of damage coming in. And but then there's Brawl behind the Sylvanas. So Nimsh, I mean, most likely you ignore Sylvanas unless you have a Direct Silence or Freezing Trap. And without that, that's going to prompt a Brawl, which. Well, I just can't wait to see what this brawl yeah. does. Oh man, this brawl is gonna be so devastating. <laughs> yeah. Wow. If he gets huh. that high main, because then Ooh. the brawl and then the cleave should clean up most things, if not everything. But we will see what. Uh, I mean, the Savannah high main will trigger yeah. first. Yeah. Do you attack though? I guess you don't want to be freezing trapped. So. If yeah. The Savannah, definitely if the Savannah, no. if the Savannah survives. Oh, oh my god! That is the best possible outcome. Yeah, that's wow. pretty sick. Oh my god. Can't complain goodness. about that right there. Look at Tice with his little grin. Oh my god. Yeah. Tice gotta be loving this. Yeah. Yeah, no more smiley faces being drawn by Wow, Nimsh. that board was so good for Nimsh too. If that board stayed like that one more turn, it would have just won. Imagine the game. Hump Master would have died to the uh to the brawl. The board for Nimsh would have still been very good. Yeah. Yeah, and he's got unstable ghoul against the snake traps as well. This has completely turned the opposite direction. Yeah, these snake tra that snake trap doesn't feel so strong now, does it? <laughs> That's well, guys, don't worry. There's still King Crush. In there. Yeah, he still has King Crush, man. And if uh, Twitch chat has taught me anything, that's the best hunter card. <laughs> <laughs> it's still pretty nasty in this spot. I mean, will we see it right now, though? Hmm. I mean. Uh, the option of Slash Patriot, like, Hero Power, Creeper. Mm. Okay, that's true. Open. Using Hero Power every turn you can, but at the same time, it's not like the opportunity that King Crush can. I mean, come this down. King Crush, this King Crush also represents hidden information for Gnimsh. Uh, oh, that's this is something that Tys cannot play around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is that last card? And maybe Tys lost track already. He maybe think is this on a Creeper, perhaps. Could be anything. Right. Like. Wow. Gromash. Okay. Pick up armor. That's not what I was expecting at all. I actually really thought he was going to cleave there and armor up uh, to make sure there are no beasts on the board and whatnot. Yeah, but look how but much damage he has. Yeah, I guess he's got 20 health, so it doesn't really matter that much. And how do you deal with all that? Are we going to see King Crush run into the... the Gromash. <laughs> no, I think you got to go face here, to be honest. Yeah, you have a lot of health to play with. If I don't... All... They but then need to if make a... King Crush 8 mana. But then I'm what serious. <laughs> Yeah, that's what we've been saying for a long time. But the problem is, what if his opponent has Alex Straza? And then you just die. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's looking pretty bad anyway. Well, this, with this kind of grim situation, Grimsh has, right. has to do some risky plays now. Because there's no way he's coming back from this kind of board by playing fair. Yeah, if you use King Crush as a removal spell here, you've already admitted that the game you are yeah. not going to win. I think it's crush time. Yeah, I think it's time to crush your opponent. Nice. How many yeah. more punts can we put out here? Well, we'll keep trying. Yeah. It's These jokes are crushing me. Oh, oh you're the king of them, Frodan. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, man, that was so bad. All right, well, King Crush <laughs> coming down. Where's he going to go? Oh, oh, and he does use his removal. Eh. Well. Well, I mean, I... I 
thing is, that's his high main over on the other side. I'm like, well, I guess if you have both your high mains, you can work through this. But he's like trying to top deck a high main right now. That's like his play. Oh. Well, Ragnaros can come down, and there's no more hidden information like you mentioned. Yeah, Ty's pretty much just playing it safe here. Yeah. Clearing anything that's on the board so Ragnaros Man, can. that was a soul-crushing moment for Nimsh. Oh, oh, baby. Well, it looks like the nine-time king of the hill. King crush of the hill? <laughs> yes. Oh. Yep. Wow. Well, it uh, looks like uh, he's just going to have to play it very defensively, but with traps and Ragnaros, like, you never actually have to do anything as the warrior player. No, you don't even have to attack. Like, there's no obligation. In fact, attacking would be silly here, I think. Yeah. Just armor up. In fact, I'd play the axe, because we already know the, the secret set. He's playing, right? That's true. You can, you, an axe actually puts a real finite clock on two turns, but yeah. uh, I suppose you could do this as well. Eh. I mean, there's no chance that he has the, the double kill command comp compared to last Yeah, game. he has no cards in hand. The thing is, there's no way to misplay this, so... Right. I mean, the whole point is you're worried about giving him extra charges, but there's really no fear whatsoever. Yeah. All right, well, Nimsh is looking like he's conceded. need a combo to win this game. <laughs> That's right. Nimsh is down to his last life now. Yep. Going up against Warrior, and he has left... Druid and Rogue. Druid and Rogue. All right, well, I, I don't know which uh, Rogue he's playing, so... Keep in uh, mind, he needs a deck that... Rogue. Yeah, I would it's, imagine, it's, but, like, is it a Maligos one? Is no, it, it's... Um, is it's it maybe, the, like, Teray's version or something? It's Hype's Tempo Storm. All right, we'll see uh, what... I'm liking the Druid, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Druid. But, I mean... Okay, well, he actually goes through... What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> that curveball. <laughs> We're like, okay, okay. I didn't, I didn't see the fourth uh, card. I'm no, like, oh, exactly. Okay. That curveball. Well, you know, a miracle, <laughs> miracle can beat handlock. It is. It does happen. Um, uh, wow. That, okay, that, that, that druid deck delivered. The punchline was amazing on that one. Dude. Oh, my what God. He's playing claw. You know he's playing Moonfire. Right. You, you don't does play two of those. Does that this druid deck? What? <laughs> Nimsh? Oh, I... Oh, see, now I love Tice. I always want to see him do well, but I need Nimsh to win this tournament. Oh, my God. Look at this. He's got Mavis. I am. I knew it. I am speechless. Not even I knew about this. <laughs> oh, man. I, he I'm wanted going, to make sure awesome. that you couldn't counter him. This wow. is amazing. Wow. Wow. I this cannot is, wait to Malikos see this. Malikos is getting lots of love this time. I mean, Nimsh has been uh, known for... Playing some pretty crazy stuff. We've seen him uh, with the, like the first time he played ETC at the IEM Shen. Uh, oh IM, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's fearless. Katowice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was the first and only guy to ever play e ETC at a high level tournament and win yeah. it. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. He beat me with that. <laughs> that was a pain. Oh. I think Why I got like a Murloc card you, or Dan? something. Yeah, no, Every I single weird tech card. Hungry crabs. Uh, ETC. You Can't wait to see what it's going to be this time. Kelvin Medica Torque yeah. is going to wreck you. Oh my god. And there is the mother ghost, guys. Wow. Yep. Okay. And he's got ways to draw. So what, what this deck is predicated upon is drawing things like Innervate and saving it for late game. And then yeah. what you happen is like you have Maligos and then Innervate swipes with like coin. That would be pretty like, crazy. It's important he has coin too, by the way. Yeah. As much as he has Gadget and Auctioneer, you actually don't play Gadget and Innervate stuff. You usually save it for Maligos. Think about this for a second. Uh, you know, Tice is a very controlling player. He's playing a very slow deck here. Uh, I would say without doubt we're going to get to the end game here. Like very late, like 10 mana for several turns now. Uh, because he ha he'll have no idea that this is in here. Like he right. might see the claw early and be like, wow, that's weird. But he's not going to think that Maligos is in here, which means he may not have any removal for it the right, turn he it comes out. Executes up. You're absolutely yeah. right. I mean, especially because Gnimsh, uh, this pick is actually very smart for Gnimsh because he knows Tyus is only going to bring those... Uh, slow decks. Yeah. And uh, this deck is very good against yeah. slow decks. Yeah. Well, on the you, flip side, it's you get, awful you get, aggro. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You get all the time you need uh, to get to the Malagos turns, and then after that Malagos hits the board, it's going to be pretty rough for Thais to actually beat it. Oh, he is going to use coin to push out Sludge Belcher. Interesting. Okay, but you know what? I think that this is actually fine just because... And already Thais has to look at this and be like, Sludge Belcher? Okay, this is one of the only decks that may not right. play Sludge Belcher, I but, mean, but yeah. that's not going to send him off to the Maligos. So, I mean, he might just be looking at this and be like, yeah. oh, this is like maybe a Watcher Druid type of style. Not Watcher Druid, because I don't think anyone like, played like that a anymore. Like a Ramp but Druid. Yeah, could, yeah, yeah. 
Like he, he probably thought maybe he misses wild. Maybe he misses wild growths. Yeah, um, and he doesn't have any innervates. He's got like a really clunky hand. Well, he does. <laughs> but well. yeah, cards like claw might give it away though if he's forced to use it. The claw. I don't know what I would think if I saw a claw. I don't know. Savage. What would I even? Would I look at the claw and say this claw must must mean he has Gadgetons and Maligos? No, I think I'd look at the claw and say, oh, okay, he's this is like some anti-hunter tech. Yeah. Or like, Maybe he um, thinks that this does enough damage to kill Undertaker, but it doesn't. Wasn't Claw um, in the original version of Token Druid with like Violet Teacher? Yeah, it was, oh. I think. I think so. Like in the like very, the very like, like first version. Ago. I don't remember that. <laughs> it was like when um, the first Magic Pros, like, because this, like, we saw Token Druid succeed with like Imp Master in the beginning and like Violet Teachers. Yeah, people had all sorts and, of weird builds. Like the Magic guys, they liked having Claw as like a early game spell removal against Aggro. Hmm. Hmm. Eh. It, it was. We haven't seen it since then. Oh, look at this play! Look at this play! Well, that's Watch. the. Oh, that's the Trinity right there. Craig has him. <laughs> that was pretty good. Look at how much health he's got at this point. Yeah, he's gonna need Maligos to finish this job. Right. Well, he might need Maligos to get in there and start attacking instead of just spell power alone. Yeah. Seriously. Right. Turn six wild growth right on time. <laughs> no, actually, wild growth late game is still pretty decent with auctioneer. Yeah, actually, yeah. it draws you so many cards. You get like three cards three off cards? of it. Yeah, that's pretty good. For two mana. He, also he another... doesn't really need those cards. Like, go look at all the <laughs> yeah. expensive spells he has in his true. hand. Seriously, and he's and the thing is, you look at some of his like most of the stuff even or some of the stuff even draws for him. Didn't he have a, a Asher Drake? Oh yeah, he did. He died. Never mind. That's what we just watched and commentated. Okay. So then. If you what's the con here? I guess he doesn't want to give any more cards to the warrior, so he's thinking about tossing out Keeper of the Grove. I, I feel like that's the only alternative to Sunwalker. Um, because I don't think Gadget Sand Claws. Or, is he really okay? Because then the, Gadget Sand the, the problem claw. with Gadget Sand is that as soon as I saw Gadget Sand, I immediately thought Mally Ghost, and that's what my rationale is. Some of the older. But weren't you I saying mean, that as a joke? Because some of the older Druid decks played one Gadgetzon. Like, that was a tech in a Druid deck, like, a long time now ago. Now he's showing Claw. I mean, I guess. it's Now it's like a... Well, look at Tice, man. He's covering... He's like, what? Yeah, he's like, what is this? Like, I don't know if I think Mally Ghost from this. I don't think I would think Mally Ghost. But I guess once you see Gadgetzon, you could be thinking I'll Moonfire. And as soon as I think off, of Moonfire, man. I think of Mally Ghost. Right, well, yeah. Which maybe he doesn't... Yeah, there it is. Moonfire. Ha. Huh. Well, yeah. I mean, Malikos Moonfire just go hand in hand. It's yeah. it's the perfect thing. It's a, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's a zero mana of kill command. Or no, it's more. Excuse me. Yeah. Six damage. It's a six mana. It's a zero mana fireball. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, I guess you have to play Malikos in your deck. I mean, to think get about it like though. that. I mean, you also have to play Moonfire in your deck, so that part sucks. That's true. That <laughs> he might true. not get to the turn though. Uh, that he actually oh, can. That's right. Make make good use out of Malikos because we see Alex Straza and Gromash already. Yeah. That right. Is true. And he's got that charge built up if he doesn't want to activate it soon. <sighs> hey, you can intervene. But Maligos. you know what? Look, he's got two Sunwalkers in his hand. I think he's just going to be fine. Like, he's going to be able to weather through all this storm, and this is right. going to go super late, I think. And Look, his hand is really setting up for some ridiculous turns later on. Yeah, you know, the, again, the Innervate is really late. It's really important late game because the turn Maligos comes out, that's when you have to make a big swing to, in this case, clear the board and shred his armor so that way he can't remove it effectively and yeah. put him on, like, either the Brawl to remove, which might not even be effective because Maligos might be the only minion on the deck or on the board, or have the Execute to remove. That's the only ability that you need to do here, to swing. It looks like he wants to go ahead and use this Keeper now. Uh, I feel like that was a better turn the turn before, but... Here, I'm trying to wonder what he would do with it. No, yeah, I like the Sunwalker the better. Sunwalker, yeah. Like, the thing is, the Sunwalker is right. pretty easy to kill, but it kind of ah. messes up everything. Like, Second you have to give him something. A really good draw, in fact. Because now he doesn't have to worry about ways to activate Gromash. Now, do you value your own life or card draw here? I feel like I would, yeah, I think this is how I would do it. Proc the well, <laughs> the Divine Shield and then At this point, you know draw. he's playing ramp style of Druid, <laughs> uh, like the late game oriented. Like, right, and so you're there. not afraid of double combo, right? It's very rare. It's extremely rare to see double combo in like a very slow late game oriented yeah. Druid. If I saw a claw 
and a Gadgezon, I would put him on no combo, I think. But there could be one combo because, you know, people are crazy like that. Gosh. But that's like, you know, cards can only have, decks can only have 30 cards in them. Something has to go for these crazy cards that Nimsh has put in here. Sure. This is interesting. He could have actually put uh, the de second Death Bite. So he has uh, an activation for the Gromash in his hand after he plays like Alexstrasza. Yeah, that would have set up really nice. If nicely. he had a, a Death Bite in play now, he could have attacked with it next turn after he plays Alexstrasza and then um, sure. have the second charge for, from the Death Bite. He's, to playing, yeah. He's just playing these matchups really slow in general. I, I, I feel like there's no reason not to do what you just said, Ecob. I'm trying to mm. think of what the mentality would be not to just have that as a possible setup, but right. maybe he thinks, oh, you know, these weird cards here, maybe he has Harrison? I don't know. But even if he were to Harrison there, it's like, well, you know, I draw a card anyway. So. Hopefully, um, you know, the, well, sorry, if Nimsh is thinking about baiting out removal, uh, and so hopefully for him, he's trying to get the executes, the shield slams out of the way here. So if Tice... I mean, if, he, if he's not going to use it, like say he uses Death Bite instead, it's the right move, because he needs to save these removals for like the heavy hitting minions. But if Tice is getting too liberal with his removal, then it could be a bad spot for when Ali goes hits the field. Yeah, because pretty soon, I mean, <laughs> you know, this is really it's funny getting close deck, to like... Ghost turns, or even the opposite. Maybe Maligos is the is the rem is the bait. For the removal, and then <laughs> Ragnaros becomes like the big threat. I, uh, I think the rag is what you you drop here. Like nothing looks very clean right, right. here, and to be honest, it's not a very exciting turn. Do you want to remove the armor, or snipe the armor smith? It doesn't really matter. I would he use say. both shield slams, so I think it's yeah, probably okay, no matter what. But you know what? This uh, this will drag actually, out and execute. What does do is um, <sighs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, and here's the play that could have happened earlier already, but uh, yeah. And he has cool Taskmaster and Gromash. In fact, yeah, he's less than able for Gromash. There's is, a, is there a way for Nish to survive this? He has to cycle through. Oh, I yeah, think absolutely just dead. <laughs> has to cycle. And the thing is, we don't really know what's in his deck. Like, even if he's cycling here, what is he doing? That's two mana. Right. He needs right. like a big game hunter and then claw yeah. in order to survive the Gromash. <laughs> Yeah, you claw so you're at 13 health. God. And one Aww. Cruel Taskmaster is already used. Both Death Spites were already used. Not like this. This is so. just tournament life on no, the No, I know. I want to see this deck do something, right? This yeah. is so weird and fun because it's and weird. cool. Yeah. Yeah. I was called weird a lot in high school, but I said, no, I'm cool. I'm glad that you Thanks. did that. Thanks, Thanks guys. I, I got looked at me like, yeah. nope, you're still weird. Well, I knew a kid just like you in high school, Frodan. I called him weird. He thought he was cool, though. <laughs> Did we go to the same high school by any chance? Uh, I mean, Frodan, no, you're This deck is definitely more cool than weird. Frodan, you're pretty cool. I saw you running around in underwear oh, and no. a probe costume. Like, that was pretty cool. Okay. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I yeah, I'm that. glad you referenced that one. Yeah. <laughs> well, Mally Ghost comes out, and it's not quite the victory cigar he anticipated. In fact... At this point, Tice is just like, ah, don't know what's going on. And Claw looks like it's going to be used to kill off Alex Straza, but there's no other choice for Nimsh. I'm surprised that, like, he didn't cycle. I guess there was nothing in the yeah. stack that he could have drawn with the white growth. Otherwise, he would have gone for it. Well, to be fair, in fact, if he didn't have this cool Taskmaster, he would have lived. Or if he didn't have the Gromash, I guess, as well. Sure. Sure, he, I guess he was just banking on uh, Tice not having the Gromash. He had Gromash yeah. for a while, but he didn't always have the cool Taskmaster. But he drew that in combination, and that was what Tice needed to get a date for second place in this group against Gara. That's right. Uh, I can't wait. We're going to do an interview with him, right? Most likely. Of course. Okay, uh, good. With, with